don't let the grungy pink hoodie fool you. I am somebody that loves an extreme horror movie. In fact, I prefer my horror movies to be the gorier the better, as long as it doesn't overshadow the plot though. Baskin has actually been on my radar for a few years now and those of us that love extreme, gory, violent, gross out, weird, bleh, sort of horror, if it's out there on the internet we will find it and I can honestly say that when I saw this image from Baskin I knew that this one was going to be for me because I am quite partial to a surreal fantasy horror. But if you don't know anything about Baskin from 2015, let me quickly fill you in. While taking a break, a unit of cops receive a distress call over the radio. Directed to an abandoned building in the middle of nowhere, they go through a trapdoor to hell when they stumble across a black mass and soon find themselves trapped in a surreal, nightmarish world. If you're new here, I go by Hordes and I talk about all things horror here on my channel on Mondays and Fridays, but as always when it comes to watching movies, I am now going to go and watch Baskin from 2015 off camera. So that way if you two decide that you want to watch this surreal horror nightmare from Turkey, nothing will be spoilt for you because nobody wants to watch a movie you have just watched somebody else watch from start to finish. You lied to me. Would I say that Baskin is an extreme horror movie? No. <laughs> For me, it's not. I've seen so many things that I would say are far more extreme than Baskin. Somebody else may disagree with me, but for me, it's just not. Like, if you've ever seen the movie The Sadness, then the sort of violence and gore and the, I'll say adult content, is kind of on the same level as the sadness but there is far less of it in this movie it's a bit like if you took the sadness and put its like extreme levels at say a four rather than at a ten and then set it in something that's a bit like dante's inferno plus the opening two chapters from the game the evil within go mixing Baskin is a movie of two halves. The first half is a very, very slow burn. And the second half, it's like they've taken the brakes off and it is freewheeling down a slightly sloping hill to get to the end, but it's still going at a slow burn. Um, the first half of this movie goes on for too long in my opinion and I really wasn't interested until we get to the abandoned house section which is about the halfway point um but in all honesty I really wasn't really interested until the character of the father showed up and I was like who's this really cool looking guy and that's when I suddenly became invested but at that point we're talking maybe an hour hour and 10 minutes I want to say an hour into an hour and 37 minute movie. Make tango faster. It's one of those movies where I can't actually talk about what happens in the plot of this because while the plot is very surface level and for a big chunk of it, not a lot really happens, everything that I could possibly mention is a spoiler. And the ending of this movie it happened so abruptly that I found myself questioning for a second if it was the actual ending because we were trucking along nicely, some things happened, and then it ended. The setting is actually far more interesting than the plot in this and I would have liked more details about what the actual hell this place was and why it's filled with cultists who are running around naked and smeared in blood and dirt and acting all feral like and I would like to have known a bit more about who the father actually was because I get that this is a surreal movie so before somebody comes to me and says but it's a surreal movie so that's why it's the way it is I want more details because everything looks so cool but I want details as to why these things are the way they are because obviously they've been picked for a reason even if that reason is just because it looks cool I still want to know this hear me now and take note 
the example that I can give is, to quote the movie directly, the father at one point says that hell isn't a place that you go, it's something that you carry around with you at all times, which is one hell of a statement to make, but then you don't tell me who it is that is carrying this version of hell around with them in their head the entire time. Like, whose mind has this creation come out of? Because if somebody is carrying it around with them, there's got to be somebody who made it. Just a puzzle box! Besides Arda, I could not care less for the other cops. I think there's five in total, including Arda, so we'll say the other four. Because they are trash talking misogynistic like grade a assholes that think because they've got a police badge that they can throw their weight around and that brutality is the answer to all things which when they come face to face with the father one of them very quickly shuts his mouth and rightfully so and i just wanted them all to die i'm not gonna lie about it my opinion never changed on the other characters because they are just so unlikable like I was counting down the minutes like, next one, can can the next one die now please? Arda's fine, you can keep him alive, he's involved in the plot somehow. But the other four, let's move them along and keep the plot going. Its visuals and its effects though are the standout of this movie as there is so much going on when you are in hell. Whether that be from the scenery and the background actors to the lighting and the props, there is always something that's going to pull your attention for you to look at. And I wish so much that, the, that more of this movie had taken place in this place in hell because did I need to spend that much time in the diner? No. Did I need the sing-along to the car radio when they're in the police van? No. It was just filler. And if you'd taken out some of that beginning section and got into the actual good stuff in the abandoned building quicker, I would have liked this movie more and it would have been a much pacier movie. You can do a slow burn, but when you're standing still, it's not a slow burn anymore. Like, your movie is stopped. Both today and yesterday. I have to take a second as well to point out that the actor who is playing the father is not in prosthetics in any way and that is their actual appearance. They have an ultra rare skin condition and they were actually cast in this role because the director was looking for somebody who had such a unique appearance and was looking at actors who had unique skin conditions and I think that that is brilliant. Baskin is going to be another movie that I describe as a love-hate ratio movie because there are equal things in this movie that I both liked and disliked. So in the end I am actually going to give Baskin from 2015 a 2.5 out of 5 stars because the thing that I was sold on for this movie was that it was going to be an extreme horror movie and for me it falls completely flat on this and as much as I liked the second half of this movie the first half was such a slow burn that it was kind of painful to get through and if I didn't know what was coming in the second half because I'd seen images online I would have possibly considered actually turning this one off before I got to that halfway point. So there you have it, my initial thoughts and my review for my first time watching Baskin from 2015. If you've also seen this movie, I would love to know what your thoughts and opinions are down in the comments section down below. Are you going to go and watch this movie or are you going to give this one a miss? If you would like to know every single horror movie that I watch, not just the ones I talk about here on YouTube, you can also find me over on Instagram and Letterboxd at Hordes of Horror. And if you enjoyed the video, maybe even stick around and join the Horde here on YouTube. And I will be back on Monday with another brand new movie review. This time, I've had enough of modern horror movies and we're going back to the 80s for a good old horror fantasy movie. So until next time, bye. <laughs>